Today, Riot completely bamboozled me by revealing Viego. Now, I was not expecting a champion reveal this early on. After all, in the past, when we got the Aphelios champion expansion, Aphelios was revealed near the end, and rightfully so. And we've already got Viego, so I don't know if this means that the reveals are done. I don't know if there's still more stuff coming. I don't know if maybe we're getting more than one champion in this champion expansion, because after all, the Ruination event is not just about Viego, though with his really cool design that we're going to talk about in a moment, and obviously his abs, this thirst trap would be enough if it was just as is. However, the Ruination event is also about the Sentinels, so Lucian, Senna, etc. And we already have a Lucian, but Senna is only in the game as a follower right now, so we could see maybe her introduced or maybe just some other second champion introduced. We know that this is also going to be an in-game event, so there's going to likely be the pass associated with it. We know that there are more skins coming. There's already been a ruined Shivana skin. And then in today's reveal video, we also got to see Battle Bunny Riven as well. So we know skins are coming. Obviously, Viego is coming. But it just feels like this is a little bit bigger than what the Aphelios event was. So with that in mind, all I can say is take your normal expectations and, you know, all that data you have based on the Aphelios expansion, and I guess throw it out the window because we don't know what's going to be right around the corner. That being said, Viego is revealed today. Viego is, I think, really cool and interesting, and there's a lot to talk about here, so I guess I should probably get started actually covering the cards. We're going to start with Viego. The level one version of Viego is a five cost five four with the fearsome keyword from Shadow Isles. Viego says each round, the first time an ally dies, summon an encroaching mist. Now an encroaching mist is a one cost one one token. It has the ephemeral tag, but it says when I'm summoned, grant all allied Viegos and other encroaching mists everywhere plus one plus one so you play viego and then if an ally dies viego goes from a five four to a six five and you get an encroaching mist that when summoned grants uh, other encroaching mists plus one plus one so the first mist itself is only going to be a one one uh think of it as like mist wraiths obviously now it does not interact with mist wraiths those are still considered separate but same functionality this does buff health and toughness of the mists though so they're going to get pretty beefy as time goes on but the important piece in my mind here is that that first summon does buff viego so you're looking at potentially a five cost six five fearsome if you can get that ally to die and you're playing shadow isles so of course you have a way to kill an ally right that's good in and of itself but they go a step further because obviously it's a champion it's got a level up condition so Viego levels up when he has seen, so he has to be on the board to see it, allies with 20 total power or more die. Now that is pretty difficult, or at least it sounds difficult, and I'm going to talk about strategies that you can employ to work on this level, but it's difficult for a reason, because level 2 Viego is busted. Level 2 Viego gets the standard plus 1, plus 1 on the body, so it becomes a 5 cost 6, 5, still has that fearsome keyword now it says each round the first time a unit dies summon an encroaching mist and that is different that is not an ally it's a unit so if you kill an, an enemy unit you're getting a mist that way and that matters because it also says round to start steal the strongest enemy this round if it's a champion kill it instead so you just start taking your opponent's army and using it against them and if it's champions you just straight kill them uh beyond just straight killing them you're also potentially then spawning your encroaching mist right out of the gate on those round starts because again it becomes kill a unit not kill an ally and so viego my knee jerk gut reaction when i first saw him was i said oh poor kindred because i think viego ends up being a better version of kindred in most instances uh, i could be wrong kindred's payoff just feels a little bit slower and I think Viego, because of the bigger stat size, because of the additional body it generates, uh, and that's important because, again, yes, this is an ephemeral unit, but the mist does a couple of things. One, 
it spawns, but then it's ephemeral. So when it dies at the end of the round, that starts giving you immediate credit toward Viego. So it, it feeds itself. But two, it's another body that you can use as a sacrificial lamb. So you can kill your encroaching mist with something like a spirit leech. You can glimpse it. Uh, you can butcher it. All those things, right? You're getting that free body every round. And that's very relevant. So I think Viego, because it acts as a source of providing you feeder units, uh, it's got a bigger stat line. It's got fearsome instead of quick attack, but um, the payoffs are also more immediate. I just feel like Viego is going to do all the things Kindred wanted to do, but better. That's my initial reaction. But I also think that Viego is just going to be more rewarding because Kindred... The thing with Kindred is, is there's so many ways to slay in Shadow Isles that you don't really have to feel like you're building around Kindred, and so it doesn't feel as rewarding when you do so, at least to me. Viego, on the other hand, because his level up condition is that much more difficult to achieve, I start thinking about all the ways that you can potentially satisfy that, and solving that puzzle in and of itself is part of the fun in my mind. So. Real quick, I'm going to cover the other cards and then I'm going to come back to Viego because like I said, I want to talk about strategies as far as leveling him up because that's, I think, going to be the most important part about whether or not he becomes competitive viable. And it's going to, I think, hinge on how easy or how difficult it is to accomplish that. So moving on to the other cards, we have Despair. This is a four cost slow spell. You pick a unit to strike your nexus, then kill it. Now, this is really interesting for a couple of reasons. On the one hand, you're hurting your nexus. And after yesterday's reveal, I had said something along the lines of, you know, with these dragons, it would be really interesting if in the future we got some sort of mechanic that cared about your nexus health and there's a payoff for you getting low on purpose. Despair also feeds into that. Now, we've still not got an actual payoff for that but the fact that there's yet even more cards that are allowing you to do this tells me that at some point that's got to be in their plans i just cannot believe that they're introducing all of these cards that purposefully nuke your own health if there's not some sort of payoff but that being said despair is one of those cards that i think is sneaky good because of how versatile it is so the pick a unit to strike your nexus is very important because it does not say ally or enemy it's any unit and so it, yes this is slow speed but the fact that you can at four mana just pick any unit take the damage once and then it dies is huge on your end yeah you're hurting yourself to kill your own units but it might help fuel viego and the level up condition or something along those lines but as far as targeting opponents units there are a fair number of units that opponents like to play that sit on the back line and don't do a whole lot and they don't necessarily have the highest attack value. They are there for long-term value generation. So somebody like Azir, for example, is a great target for Despair. I will happily pay four mana and take one damage if it means that I just nuke Azir. Like that's... That's just the gist of it, you know? So I think Despair is one of those cards that when you look at it, you're saying, well, you know, it's slow speed and I still have to take the damage, but you're playing Shadow Isles, so you probably have access to healing. And if you pair this with the right region where you're going to have access to even more healing, I think you can really offset the quote unquote downside of Despair. And this becomes a much cheaper vengeance and that is a very big deal so do not sleep on despair i think this card is better than it looks and i think that it's going to surprise some people in the early days because they're not expecting it to be as versatile as it actually is so the only other card revealed today because again encroaching mist is the token is the camivoran again i don't know if i'm saying that properly Soldier. This is a three cost three three, but when I'm summoned, summon an encroaching mist. So this is your Viego supplement because you need to pump these mists so that they start feeding Viego 
more and more and more. Now, I like that this is a summon effect specifically for the soldier because you can then play some fun cards to cycle this or flicker this or whatever terminology you want to use. I use a bunch of old magic terminology, so I apologize, but to get this to re-enter play. So you think about like Chronicler, for example, you play Soldier on three, you play Chronicler on four, uh, the Chronicler hits the Soldier, so it dies and comes back, but when it comes back, it summons yet another Mist. Now, that's not very impressive on Curve, right? But if you've already got a Viego out, so instead, let's say, you know, you've played the Soldier, and then a couple of turns later, you play your Viego, and then on the following turn, if you play Chronicler on the Soldier, you're going to get credit for the soldier dying because that's what it does. It, it kills it and then revives it, right? So Viego gets credit for that dying and then it makes another mist. And then when that mist dies, Viego gets credit for that as well. And that is one of the ways that I really think you're going to see Viego ramped up. I think Viego will go very well in either um, something like a Nasus Thresh style deck, but instead of going with Nasus, maybe Viego is the focus where you are doing a lot of self slaying, but specifically it needs to be stuff with high attack. So like Spirit Leech is a fantastic card for Viego because it's going to kill something, but then when it dies itself, that's four power. Because again, Viego needs big things to die. Killing off your zero ones from Wings in the Wave does not really help with your Viego issue. So how you harness that is going to be very relevant. Obviously, Encroaching Mist is not a Mist Wraith, but Mist Wraiths are going to be potentially a really good archetype to consider playing Viego with. He's already got Fearsome, so it's playing right into that Fearsome archetype anyway. And then on top of that, because the Mist Wraiths grow in power and they're scaling, by the time you get to the point where Viego is going to be relevant, if your Mist Race themselves are 5.5s five or 6.6s six and you get one or two of those to die, well, then you're halfway to leveling Viego already. And uh, Wraith Caller is already got four attack itself. And so if it's making, you know, a, a 6.2 Mist Wraith, you're halfway to leveling Viego when those two die. So I think if you're going for the like incremental ways to level Viego, I think that either self slay shadow isles or like mist wraiths really stands out to me are going to be the ways to go now mist wraiths has something else that's really important and that's the other way that i think that you can focus on viego whether it's with the actual mist wraiths deck or if it's just with a standard control deck but i really feel like harrowing is going to be the most common way you see viego get leveled i think that if you play a standard control deck and you get to the point where late game you're dropping a Viego and then on the next turn you pop a Harrowing, for example. That's likely at that stage of the game going to be enough that when your Harrowing resolves and then you attack with everything, when they die, Viego will level. And then even though you don't have a permanent board, Viego leveled even by himself on the board with a control deck might be enough to just close out a game because you've got so much disruption there. So. Uh, I think Viego is definitely going to be in harrowing style decks, and I think that he might repopularize Rekindler as well, because another thing that's interesting about Viego is the encroaching mists, because every time they're summoned, you grant all Viegos and other encroaching mists everywhere, plus one, plus one. So there is actually an incentive to continue to play copies of Viego over and over and over again, and that could also be another way that you focus on building him you could just make huge viegos and then start copying them and going that route as well so you could play around another another thing that stands out to me with viego is uh, matron so you could play around with viego and spectral matron and then like sith realists because that's a deck that sometimes it runs champions sometimes it doesn't run any at all but if you jam a viego in there and then suddenly you play Matron into a Scythria. Well, when Scythria dies, you're halfway, because she's ephemeral in that case, you're halfway to leveling Viego as it is. But then on top of that, if any of your other units dies that have been buffed, right? If that Matron dies as well, Viego is just leveled. And it might even be worth it at that point to just self-sacrifice that Matron to get 
your big Viego to also being leveled depending on the game state and the board state. So I do think Spectral Matron is another path to get there. Uh, obviously, Scythria is a great way to do it, but it doesn't have to be that. I think that you'll get enough value out of Matron in general if you want to try other archetypes. Now, you could get cheeky and try really going the incremental route. Like you could play a bunch of units that generate other units so that you're just getting a little bit of value every turn. Um, I, the dragons are really low to the ground one, but the one that stands out to me is Heimerdinger. So the big problem is obviously Viego costs five and Heimer costs five and Viego has to be there to see them. So your setup is very clunky because they both want to be played on curve. But if you get to the point where you know, you're playing two or three spells a turn and those are making turrets and then you're using the turrets to chump block, you can probably level Viego in like a turn or two with that kind of exchange. So if you want to get cheeky and do fun stuff, anything that starts generating units like Heimer, I think is a great way to go. But I really feel like it's going to be Harrowing, Spectral Matron, and then maybe something like Mist Wraiths. Uh, those are what stand out to me as the likely landing spots for Viego. I know... In the reveal video, we saw the dragons. I think that they might fit into uh, some sort of Viego archetype as well. And again, I don't know if we're going to get more cards. It's entirely possible Viego has more support coming. I was completely caught off guard by us getting Viego this early because the event doesn't start for eight more days. So I have to assume that we are maybe getting two champions and it's going to be Viego and probably a Sentinel. But I have no idea. So, uh, like I said, you can take everything you thought you knew about this release cycle and throw it out the window. But I'm excited for Viego. I think that, again, part of the fun will be solving the level up puzzle. And that's going to create some really cool deck building. I think that Viego is certainly very strong. Even not leveled, I think he's strong enough. Because Fearsome's a relevant keyword. He's making another body. And he's going to be growing so he keeps himself alive very well. He's got at least four health, so he's not dying to the most common forms of removal. And because he's making another body, he plays right into what Shadow Isles wants to do as a region, which allows him to fit into a number of different decks. And so while you can build around him in different ways, it's not always the same experience. I just think he's very well designed, very cool, certainly very powerful at level two. And for the other cards, Soldier is just a nice supplemental piece. And Despair, as I said before, is I think better than it looks, so do not sleep on it. I think that's a card that might end up seeing some play, but this is Viego, and I want to know what you all think. Are you excited for Viego? Is it what you expected? How do you plan on solving the deck building puzzle, if you will? How do you want to level up Viego? Do you think it can be done consistently? Uh, I will say the, the most powerful ways to do it are all late game plays, right? So whether it's Matron or whether it's Harrowing, you do have to consider that that means you have to keep your Viego alive long enough or he's going to end up being like a five drop that's not a real five drop. Again, he could end up just being a control finisher. But I still think that there is some merit to playing him early and I wouldn't mind seeing some versions where you're trying to either replay him over and over with rekindler um think like zombie anivia but instead it's viego or i wouldn't mind seeing versions where you're just copying him with all sorts of other weird effects but i want to know how you're going to solve the puzzle you know do you think he's good enough on his own all that jazz tell me your viego thoughts and reactions but if you made it this far i appreciate you thank you for watching and as always until next time may you walk on warm sands